I'm getting very weird. This is kind of like, am I sharing a little too much? Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm revealing how silly I am. Cool. Ay, 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 man. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about iconic book titles. So the first five books that I'm going to be talking about are iconic book titles from books that I have read and loved and then the last five iconic book titles are books that I want to read because of their iconic book titles. So without further delay, let's just start talking about some of these iconic titles. But the mission for today's video is for you guys to let me know in a comment what your favorite book titles are or what books you want to read specifically because of their titles. I have been working on my own story. I have talked about this a little bit here and there in my videos, I keep mentioning it. I wanna film a, a writing vlog soon and tell you guys a little bit more about where I'm at with my story. But anyway, I have been thinking about titles for my book and I've been thinking about a lot of working titles and I just, as a reader and a writer and just a person in general, I think titles are so exciting and fantastic because they are the little introduction to the story. They have to grab you like the cover. You guys know how much I love cover design as an illustrator. And so I feel like titles are so important. as as important or even more important as important as the covers because that is what really draws you to the book and gives you an insight into possibly what it's about. So anyway, that's my mission. Let me know what your favorite book titles are or what books you want to read because of the titles. But the first book that I want to tell you guys about that I think is incredibly iconic and a lot of his titles are very iconic and that is William Shakespeare, I have here Much Ado About Nothing, which is one of his comedies. Why I love the title of Much Ado About Nothing is it perfectly reflects what the entire play is about, and it sets the tone even before you read it. Basically, a much ado is like a great fuss, and so they are making a great fuss about nothing. Nothing in the sense of the story is a lot about the character's actions based on things that they hear but not things that they know is completely true and it just is basically they all make a great fuss about these things that kind of are miscommunications. I think it's a perfect introduction to the story. It gives you the tone right away and I think it's just really a really really smart title. So of course we had to start with Shakespeare because he is just so iconic. He is iconic himself and this title is also iconic. The next title is one of my very favorites. I read this book many, many years ago and I do have such a sweet spot for it still and that is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Now, speaking of William Shakespeare, this title is taken from Julius Caesar written by, of course, William Shakespeare. I have the line written down on my computer so that I don't butcher it, but it is from Julius Caesar, Act 1, Scene 2, when the character Cassius is trying to persuade Brutus that Caesar wants to become king and the real danger that that could be for Rome. And the line says, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars but in ourselves. And I love that. I am a huge fan of the moon and the stars. I just have such a sweet spot for the moon and the stars. Particularly, it really started with my love of The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, and I just love stars. I have glow-in-the-dark stars on my bedroom ceiling because I am <laughs> nine years old at heart. <laughs> so I love that. Um, and I love that it was taken from Shakespeare. And I recently read John Green's most recent nonfiction book, which is The Anthropocene Reviewed, and I loved it. Um, so this was my first John Green book, and I just recently read that one and loved it and I love that he took the title of this book from Julius Caesar and I just love the significance behind it. So yes, The Fault in Our Stars. The next iconic title is from one of my favorite plays and that is The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. So what I love about the title The Importance of Being Earnest is the two main male characters of this play, Algernon and Jack, 
are trying to woo or win over the two female characters of the play and they both, the two female characters, say or mention that they love the name Ernest and so Jack and Algernon pretend that their names are Ernest. But the funny thing is that the word Ernest means honest and so the importance of being Ernest is saying also the importance of being honest where the two main characters, Jack and Algernon, are not being honest about their names being Ernest and I just think that that is such clever wordplay. I am a huge fan of a pun and I think Oscar Wilde is just a genius. This is one of my favorite plays. It is so funny and I just absolutely adore it. I also just love anything Oscar Wilde writes. I think his, he's one of the best writers that we have. So yes, I love the importance of being earnest for the fantastic wordplay with earnest and honest. The next iconic title is from one of my favorite books from my childhood, and that is Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. So why I love the title Tuck Everlasting is because it is quite literally telling you about the story, or at least about the family that the story is about. So we are following a young girl who discovers this family, the Tucks, their last name is Tuck, and how they are everlasting, they are immortal, because they drank from a spring, a magic spring that made them immortal. And it's about whether she should join them and also drink from the spring. The beauty of mortality and immortality, and it's just a fantastic story, but why I love Tuck Everlasting, not only because it just tells you right away, it sets the tone and tells you a little bit about the story. I love, I love the word everlasting. <laughs> I feel like that's such a silly reason to love a book title. I mean, maybe not, but I love how the word everlasting sounds. I just, there, I don't know if you guys agree with this, but there are some words that I just love to say that I love the sound of. Another one, <laughs> it's been one of my favorite words for years now smorgasbord <laughs> and and pumpernickel um so a smorgasbord obviously is when you have like a great array of usually food and then pumpernickel is like a type of bread or a type of like, we have like pumpernickel bagels and so <laughs> i always love saying it's a smorgasbord of pumpernickel <laughs> i'm i'm revealing how silly I am. Um, anyway, so yes, um, I love the, the sound of the word everlasting and I love how this really gives you an insight into what the story is about without really giving too much away. And if you have not read Tiger Everlasting, I cannot recommend it enough. It is beautifully written and just one of my favorite stories. The last title that I love so much from books that I have read and then we will move on to books that I want to read because of their titles the next one that I have read and that I do love is For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. Speaking of Ernest, we have a real Ernest. Um, so For Whom the Bell Tolls is taken from a poem and I have it written down again so that I don't butcher it. It is taken from the metaphysical poet John Donne, his famous meditation number 17. And it says, no man is an island either of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. I love that. Oh my god. Uh, Therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. It's just so beautiful. I just love how it sounds. It's, it sounds like music. That's what I love about so much poetry is it just has such a cadence to it, such a melody to it, but it's just words on a page like any other words on a page, but poetry just has such magic to it. And I love that Ernest Hemingway took it from that poem. Um, yeah, so I just love the sound of it. For Whom the Bell Tolls is a fantastic story. It's about war as well as the connection of a community during times of war and tumult and it's a fantastic book and I love Hemingway. You guys know, if you are familiar with my channel, how much I love Hemingway and this is just one of my very favorite titles. Okay, time to talk about the books that I want to read because of their titles. The first one is written by Angela Carter and that is her collection titled The Bloody Chamber. Now, I 
I just, I love it. I feel like it sets the mood again, sets the tone of the story. The Bloody Chamber, it does have a very fairy tale kind of sound to it. And I know that so many people love this collection, as well as Emma, one of my best friends, her YouTube channel, Emmy. I have actually never read any Angela Carter before, and I definitely want that to change because I have heard nothing but amazing things about her. I kind of don't want to know too much about what the stories are about, but I do know I believe the Bloody Chamber specifically, the title short story, is a retelling of Bluebeard, if I'm correct. But yes, you guys let me know how you feel about the Bloody Chamber if you have read it. Um, I am certain that you're going to say that you love it because I feel like just I'm, I haven't heard a single bad thing about this collection, so I want to read it very badly. The next book I want to read not only because of the title, also because of the cover, also because of the story itself, and that is Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. So this is a retelling or I guess a reimagining or a prequel to Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is the classic book that got me into loving classic literature, and it's telling one of the minor characters' stories who in Jane Eyre doesn't really get a voice. She doesn't really... Um, she's sort of... It's complicated. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is basically telling her story before the events of Jane Eyre occur, and why I love the name Wide Sargasso Sea is, again, it sets the tone. I feel like it just, I don't know, I have a great connection to, like, nature, like, nature words in titles. Another thing, I love alliteration, so I love the Sargasso Sea. Um, it's very weird. Do you guys, okay, I feel like I'm getting very particular and very weird in this video, <laughs> telling you my favorite words, but I also have favorite letters. And some of my favorite, one of my favorite letters is W. So I love the alliteration of the S and I love that it starts with a word that starts with W. <laughs> I'm getting very weird. This is kind of like, am I sharing a little too much? Anyway, this is how my brain works with words um, and the sounds of words. So I just think that that's a fantastic title and I think it's beautiful. Also, this is the beautiful Penguin Clothbound Edition, which is designed by the fantastic Corley Bigford Smith, who can literally never do any wrong. Um, and I just want to read this very badly, so hopefully I'll read it sooner rather than later. Again, I've heard amazing things about this one, especially from people who also love Jane Eyre, so very excited about this one and love that title. The next book is a book that I have been meaning to read for so long and I just haven't. I keep putting it off, I think because I'm intimidated by it, because it is a little bit lengthy and yeah, but also like I, I do like long books. Right now though, I'm battling with a reading slump, so long books are intimidating me a little more than usual. Anyway, that book is The Overstory by Richard Powers. I have heard nothing but incredible things about this book. It is also the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. And anyway, let's talk about the title. So why I love The Overstory is because when I was reading another book, um, I have it on my shelves, but I don't have it here. Um, it is called Landmarks and it is written by Robert McFarlane, who is one of my favorite nature writers. And when I was listening to the audiobook, um, so I was physically reading it and listening to the audiobook, and on one of my walks, I want to say this was like last spring or the spring before last spring, I don't remember, I think it might have been two springs ago, anyway, I was going for a walk and in one part of my neighborhood there's a wooded area that I love walking through, and I was listening to this audiobook about um, landmarks in nature and it's just a fantastic book in itself. Robert McFarlane defines different terminology found in nature and one of the words was overstory and so an overstory is the canopy that the very top of the leaves of the trees make and so the canopy that the leaves of the tree makes is called an overstory and I was walking through the wooded little area near my house and I was looking up at the trees, looking up at the overstory, when the narrator defined the term overstory. So it was just this coincidence that I thought was so beautiful and ever since then I also I just love how that sounds. Another word that I love is overstory and I think that it's so 
beautiful. I, it intrigues me. The word overstory intrigues me. I just like how it sounds. Um, and so I really want to read this book by Richard Powers because it is titled The Overstory and also because it just sounds fascinating. The back says, National Book Award winner Richard Powers' 12th novel is a sweeping and passionate work of activism and resistance that is also a stunning evocation of and pay into the natural world. From the roots to the crown and back to the seeds, the overstory unfolds in concentric rings of interlocking fables that range from antebellum New York to the late 20th century timber wars of the Pacific Northwest and beyond. There's a world alongside ours, vast, slow, interconnected, resourceful, magnificently inventive, and almost invisible to us. This is the story of a handful of people who learn how to see that world and who are drawn up into its unfolding catastrophe. Does that not sound fantastic? And I just love the cover as well, love the title. I think I'm gonna love this book. I'm just slightly intimidated by it, but we'll just have to get past that. Yeah, the, yeah ooh, the font is tiny. Tiny font, also scary. <laughs> but I really think that I'm going to love it. The next book that I want to read because of the title is The Book of Disquiet by Fernando Pessoa. So I am currently reading a very small collection of his poetry, I Have More Souls Than One. Again, fantastic title. Love that title so much. And I'm really liking his poetic voice. And I have heard, again, nothing but fantastic things about this book as well. And why I love the title The Book of Disquiet is because this is, I believe, fragments of his internal thoughts and things that he has dealt with. And basically, the, the disquiet in his mind. If I think about it in my own self, um, I am one of those people that are constantly thinking about things, constantly questioning existence and life, and um, I, I love big, deep conversations, big, deep thoughts, I guess. I just, I find it very cathartic? I don't know if cathartic is the right word, but I love thinking about these really expansive ideas. And so my mind kind of never shuts off, and I like thinking about it as disquiet, because even though you might not be saying anything, thinking these things, because it's all internal, but it is still disquiet in your mind. And I just think that that's really brilliant and smart. It says, Fernando Pessoa was many authors in one. He attributed his prolific writings to a wide range of alternative selves, each of which had a distinct biography, ideology, and horoscope. When he died in 1935, Pessoa left behind a trunk filled with unfinished and unpublished writings among which were the remarkable pages that make up his posthumous masterpiece, The Book of Disquiet, an astonishing work that, in George Steiner's words, gives to Lisbon the haunting spell of Joyce's Dublin or, Kafka, or Kafka's Prague. I just think that that sounds fantastic. Again, for the millionth time, I've heard nothing but fantastic things about this book, and I desperately want to read it. This is also the Penguin Classics edition, which is edited and translated by Richard Zenith. So, love, love the sound of the Book of Disquiet. Like, I just love, I love how that title sounds. The last book and the last title that makes me want to read this book is The Sailor Who Fell From Grace With The Sea by Yokio Mishima. I love the sound of The Sailor Who Fell From Grace With The Sea. Like, is that not the most beautiful thing? I feel like I don't really have to explain why I think this title is gorgeous. Also, this cover, this is the Vintage Classics edition, but it's the Vintage Japan. I also love the inside cover because it's like these red waves, and I feel like it perfectly emulates, like, obviously the sea, a lot of the sea motif. The inside flap says, A band of savage 13-year-old boys reject the adult world as illusory, hypocritical, and sentimental, and train themselves in a brutal callousness they call objectivity. When the mother of one of them begins an affair with a ship's officer, the boy and his friends idolize the man at first, but it is not long before they conclude that he is in fact soft and romantic. They regard this disillusionment as an act of betrayal, and the retribution is deliberate and horrifying. This is also translated by John Nathan. That sets the tone and gives you an idea of what the story is about without giving too much away. And I am very excited to read this one. So that is the last title 
or the last book that I want to read because of the title. So here are the 10 books with 10 iconic titles that either I have read and I love and why I love the titles or the books that I want to read because of their iconic titles or because I love their titles. Um, so I hope that you guys liked this idea. I think it's fun to think about books in different aspects, like not just the stories themselves, but the titles. And I did a video about dedications. I just like picking smaller aspects of books, like the title or the dedication, and to talk about that. I would really love to do books that I want to read because of their covers. I think that would be really fun. Fun. But yes, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and always being so lovely and supportive and wonderful. Let me know in a comment again what your favorite titles are um, and what books you want to read because of their titles. But I hope that maybe you found something that piqued your interest. Anyway, enough babbling from me. I hope you're having a fantastic day or night wherever you are. I will see you soon in another video and happy reading. <laughs>